Hi, I'm Chris Weston. And thanks for joining me. We're taking a little bit of time here, have a little bit of fun, and uh, I'm going to challenge you a little bit about some financial principles. My first question to you is, is your objective to be uh, put in a position to where you're ultimately going to be faced with paying the most income tax you possibly can for the rest of your life? Or do you think it would be prudent to learn how to legally pay the least amount of income taxes that you can throughout your life? Let me ask you another way. Um, is it your objective to have the biggest pile of money that you can accumulate throughout your lifetime? Or would you rather have the most spendable amount of money that you can spend throughout your lifetime? Because they're two different worlds. Um, let me tell you what I believe. I believe that you and I have the right as U.S. taxpaying citizens to keep and utilize the wealth that we've accumulated without interference from banks and Wall Street and especially the government. And what I mean by interference is I consider things like taxes, fees, interest. I think those types of things are, are interference. They interfere with our accumulation of wealth and more importantly, they truly interfere with our distribution upon retirement of the monies that we're going to receive. And my question to people is simple. If you could reduce or eliminate those interferences, would you want to know how? Let me put it another way for you. Take this circle. Now this circle represents all the wealth that you have, everything you're gonna have the rest of your life. The, the IRS says we have to pay taxes on the money as we earn it. So once you pay your income taxes to the IRS, my question from that point on is, how much more do you want to give to the IRS? Let me ask you the same question in a different way. This is all everything that you've accumulated and you've paid your taxes. How much of what you have left do you want to keep and grow forever? What I've learned is traditional planning, traditional models, Go against that principle right there. Everything that you just said you wanted is attainable, but yet in today's world, with the things that are going on out there, it actually goes against this principle. Now, everybody has assets, all right? Some are bigger than others, and some people have more, but everybody that has assets wants them to grow and accumulate. And these could be many different things. There could be government-sponsored plans like IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, those types of things. And this bucket might be a brokerage account where you have uh, outside investments. Um, this might be real estate. This might be your home, your autos. You might get an inheritance down the road. Everybody has assets. Again, some are larger than others and, and, and some have more, but everybody wants theirs to grow. Interestingly enough, as we reach retirement age, we start to find out that there are problems out in a world that existed or exists that we weren't fully aware of or maybe not aware of at all. And sometimes these problems are born from our assets, believe it or not. The IRS treats assets where they lay differently. Were you aware of that? These are taxed differently than these. These are taxed differently than these. And depending upon where your assets lie, certain things over here crop up or occur that we didn't know about. For example, take, take Social Security. Did you know if one of these boxes is too big that the IRS has the right to, to come in upon retirement and tax your Social Security? If it's big enough, they could tax your Social Security husband and wife to the point that you'll give back a quarter of a million dollars to the IRS just on your Social Security. Were you aware of that? Take Medicare. Did you know that Medicare is treated the same way? If one of these assets is too big, you get to be penalized and you get to pay extra for the same thing that somebody else doesn't have to.
Did you know how that worked? In retirement, Medicare, medical issues sometimes crop up and sometimes long-term care issues. Especially women, women are concerned if something happens to the, the husband, you know, who's gonna care for her in her, in her later years? Um, here's fees, costs, other things that occur over here that sometimes cause a problem. Here, here's a big one. Do you think taxes, income taxes, are going to go up, down, or stay the same? Our government just infused, infused trillions of dollars into the system to fight a pandemic. When are they going to want it back? At what rate are they going to want it back? And how much of it is going to come from you? We don't know. We don't know what taxes are going to go up, but most people say they are going to go up. What about the market? You know, who made the rule that every 10 years, somebody needs to give up 30% of their retirement funds because of a correction? Do you think that the stock market could be volatile at some point in time in your retirement? Those are problems and questions that we don't know. Some we do know, but a lot of more are born out of our assets. Well, here's what the IRS has allowed for 107 years, they'll allow you to put an asset inside the circle and have it grow forever, never to be taxed again. And we'll, we'll talk just a little bit more about that. But traditional planning and traditional thinking, and I was taught at a young age, is hey, if a problem arises, um, get rid of it as soon as you can. And sometimes that means earmarking an asset to do that. Cash. Cash is a pretty good asset. Well, if long-term care raised its ugly head in retirement and you took cash to solve that problem, you can certainly do that. Um, and that may or may not take care of that problem, but it certainly diminishes the asset or reduces it. Is that what you really want? What if, what if you could put that asset inside this circle and by doing so, you got to keep it and you got to grow it forever. At the same time, you got rid of that problem. What if the more assets you put inside that circle, the more of these problems disappear? including taxes, including market risk, never to be seen again. Once they're inside this shield or this circle, because of the IRS rulings, they're protected and, and they're guaranteed never to go backwards. And upon retirement, you can take distributions out of the circle that are Tax exempt and tax exempt means they don't exist. They don't show up on IRS 1040 tax return. They do not exist except in your circle. You control it, you own it, and you can decide what you want to come out of it, when you want to come out of it. You have access, you have control and these distributions can never affect your social security they can never affect your medicare premiums and they will last your lifetime and beyond i work with a, a group of financial advisors or professionals across the country there's maybe 50 of us some are accountants some are attorneys some are uh, high-end financial advisors with millions of dollars under management and they're sharp people and together we focus solely on that circle and the way we focus on that circle is by taking a look at individual assets and the implications of those assets and how they affect your retirement and 
once you understand the implications of the choices you have already made and you decide that, or it's discovered that they, they may be causing a problem, you have the option of putting them in your own circle. Now, if you look at your, your assets, you discover there's a problem, you want to put them inside of a circle, you're certainly going to want to know how that circle works and you're going to want to know what it is. And the answer is, it depends on your assets. The IRS has allowed seven ways or several ways that this circle can be attained. Until we know the ramifications or the implications of your assets and how they affect your retirement income, we don't know which is the best solution for that. So my question to you is, if, if you're concerned about taxation, and I'm gonna go right back to the very opening questions, is it your desire to be placed in a system where you are guaranteed to pay the most income tax possible for the rest of your life? Or would you wanna learn how legally to pay the least amount of income taxes for the rest of your life and have the most spendable income. And my second question was, is it your desire to have the largest pot of money that you can accumulate? Or would you prefer to have the most spendable amount that you can have for the rest of your life? And I can tell you that that most spendable amount for the rest of your life is going to be percentages higher than whatever that big pile of money can give you. And it's this right here. So. Thanks for joining me. Um, you know, when we go through these, there's lots of questions and we love questions. But if you're concerned about the ramifications of these, or if you're, if you're curious of how this works, um, that's a conversation and it starts right here. The implications of what you've already chosen to do and how it's going to affect the money that you want in retirement. So again, I've got a couple other ideas that I'm gonna come up and share with you. They're, they're similar to this, they're, they're put in math equations so you can actually see numbers. So if you're interested in those, check them out. And uh, if you're interested in, in learning more about this, give us a holler. Thanks again.